when I was 18 weeks pregnant, they discovered he actually had a heart defect. And so we knew when he was born, he would be going into heart surgery. It was a big sense of relief when they said, you know, he did great. The nurse went to put in a feeding tube and uh, put it in through his nose and um, she started to struggle and his color seemed to be, he seemed paler and he started blowing bubbles and when we brought it up to the nurse, she came in and looked at him and um, just said, well, he's just a fussy baby. You know, I did tell her that, you know, the nurse previously struggled and had to put it under x-ray And I felt a little dismissed when she was telling me, well, I've done this for 20 years and it should be fine. Right before she starts to do this, we tell her, you know, hey, his lips are turning blue. She finishes what she's doing and getting the feed and then starts to look and he starts blowing lots of bubbles. And at this point, she hits the call light. And then she looked at me and she says, I need you to run out in the hall and ask for help. So I ran out in the hall and I scream, my son is turning blue, I need help. I think there was probably over 20 people surrounding his bed, doing everything they could. And then at nine o'clock, or a little bit after, I hear the doctor call. She says, we're gonna call it, he's passed away. Right there, you just break down. You know, they just, This isn't supposed to happen. He was doing so well. They said he was going home in a couple days. What happened? Grant, unfortunately, had a cardiopulmonary arrest because the tube was in his lung and not in his stomach. And um, his lungs got filled with formula. And we attempted to resuscitate Grant, and unfortunately, we lost him. Patient safety is what helps to drive our practice. What is the best for the patient? What is the safest for the patient? And are we doing our best for our patients and our families when we're taking care of them? Through our study, we've discovered there are probably at least 25% of children that are at risk um, of a misplaced feeding tube. And something needs to be done about it. Deanna has, you know, taken that by the scruff of the neck and have turned it into amazing things. The work that Deanna has done both here inside Children's as well as nationally as an advocate, in particular around the processes related to placing NG tubes has been extraordinary. Because of our change to the policy, we were able to prevent further harm on these patients. It's that maintaining and it's really making our nurses, our physicians, and realizing we should not consider this a benign procedure and that if you ever have doubt with that tube, it's okay to take it out and it's okay to raise concern and speak up. You know, maybe if that one nurse had stopped and didn't put that last feed, maybe there would have been enough time to resuscitate Grant and that he'd be with us today. I'll never know. But maybe if she had paused and listened to us, maybe he would have. I see that parents appreciate that. And a lot of times parents will say to us, We're not happy about what happened, but we're very thankful that you were honest with us. Having that trusting, transparent relationship is the key to having good care of anybody, whether it be a child, a family, or an adult. No one comes to work wanting to harm any patient or family, but it calls us to do better. And I I really feel this work has, has really highlighted that in our institution, is we knew that we could do better. 